Now think about this. Have you ever tried to open a text file in Notepad only to find that all the lines of the actual document are all stuck in a single line? And we know it's not a problem with the actual file itself because when we open it with another text editor like Notepad++ or WordPad, everything turns out fine. Now, I've personally been having this problem for basically forever as long as I've been using a Windows computer, but it has never occurred to me to actually find out why. Until now. You're watching another Random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. So what we're going to do today is we're going to try and understand what is happening, why does Notepad actually take all those different lines and compress them together, and we'll try to understand a little bit about computing history as well as text files while we're at it. So here's the deal. In the first place, what exactly is a text file? Now, you know what it looks like. Essentially, when you open Notepad, it's a blank screen, and you type words, and it gets saved into a file. In fact, text files are one of the simplest files out there because essentially it's just a recording of every keystroke you've typed into the editor. Every key you press, which corresponds to individual characters, actually also have unique numerical values. And when you take these and code them in bits and write them directly to disk, essentially you have a text file. To determine what numerical code each letter maps to and vice versa, we can refer to what is known as the ASCII table. The reason why we're going through this particular explanation is to try and understand how the new lines are actually recorded in the actual text file. If you think of the text file as just a stream of bits, then obviously there is no way for us to say, hey, move this stream of bits to the next line. Instead, what you're doing when you're actually hitting the enter key on the keyboard is you are generating just another key code. Unlike any other key on your keyboard, this key code doesn't actually create a letter on screen. Instead, it tells your text editor to move the rest of the text to a new line. That, of course, is why we actually call this character the new line character. In fact, if you look closely at the ASCII table, you realize that a lot of those things there aren't actually letters. They aren't actually stuff you can type on a keyboard. In fact, these characters are little instructions, like the new line character, which tell your text editor to do things, for example, to advance to the next line. In fact, in programming, when we want to use special characters like this, we can write what is known as an escape sequence. For example, if we do a backslash n, what this means is do a new line character. So yeah, for the rest of this video, you may hear me referring to the new line character as slash n, and that's just referring to, well, the new line character itself in its escaped form. So that's all well and good, right? Why would there be a problem of one particular text editor being unable to recognize new line characters, whereas other text editors don't have this problem? Well, as it turns out, the new line character is not the only thing that Notepad is looking out for. Why? Well, this is where the history comes in. I actually did some research on this topic, and as it turns out, this is one of the conventions left over from the days typewriters were used. Yep, that's a pretty long way back. In fact, Notepad isn't just looking for a new line character. Instead, it is looking for a slash r slash n. In other words, two special characters to indicate a new line. But why? As it turns out, in the typewriter days, these do have their unique meanings. Slash r actually means carriage return. And, well, if you can imagine that little hit on the typewriter, a carriage return actually tells this to move all the way back to the left. Well, it's left if you're typing in English. Of course, there are languages that start from the right, in which case a carriage return means go back to the right. But you get the idea. A carriage return just tells it to return to the place where a line normally starts. But if you're using a typewriter, that wouldn't be enough because if you continue typing right away, you would type over your previous line of text. That is where the slash n actually comes in. It tells the typewriter to actually feed the paper, you know, shift it up by one line, so that you have a new line of fresh paper to type on. And that is the actual origin of the slash r slash n requirements used by Notepad. 
As it turns out, back in the day when programs were used to feed typewriters, this was required because, well, it has to do two things for you to actually continue typing on the next line. And there you go, that is the explanation of why Notepad, which actually follows this older convention, sometimes has problems trying to read and understand text files that only break lines by using the slash n character. It is of course worth noting that some other text editors, as well as text editors on different operating systems, might not always break lines using slash r slash n. They might just put in a slash n, which in fact, most of the time, is correctly interpreted on modern operating systems and modern software to mean go to a new line. It is also worth mentioning that the slash r slash n convention is actually still in use, for example, for certain communications protocols, including HTTP, which is basically the protocol we use that facilitates all our web surfing. So yeah, that is the surprisingly deep reason why Notepad actually takes your entire document and sticks it into one long line. I gotta confess, this episode isn't exactly very useful to you, but hopefully, you know, it was kind of interesting. Hopefully you've gained some better insight into this topic. But that's all there is for this particular episode. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Hello, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget I appreciate every like, favorite, and comment you give me. If you'd like to see more from me in the future, don't forget to subscribe. For more updates outside of YouTube, do follow my official Twitter account at 0612TV. And if you'd like to see more of my work, you can also check out my About Me page. Once again, thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612TV.